This is an Ecosonic 100 watt panel. Me being an accessories guy, I'm really excited about what's inside. Let's take a look. Let's get this up out of here. Oh, it's a little on the, the taller side. It's kind of a, not as much of a square panel as it is a rectangle. It's packaged up in an interesting way as well in terms of how it has this, uh, you can see this little, clip here that's kind of like a thin form factor it has a uh a almost like faux suede or some kind of weird feel to it you have these little interesting legs they are velcro no little sticky stick thing to keep the panel kind of legs out so you basically just have to angle them and kind of hope for the best they have pretty good spring back in them so that's pretty cool all right you open the panel up a little bit oh okay okay so this is what purpose that this thing serves i probably won't use this much this is actually just keeping the middle together that's actually very thoughtful from a packaging standpoint but not um super thoughtful from a usage standpoint because then you have to unclip this every time it's not the biggest deal some panels put velcro in between here which kind of annoys me as well i shouldn't say it annoys me it doesn't annoy me it's just an extra little something or another. Okay, we got 22 volts, 4.5 amps. One of the things that I'm interested in the most is this accessories. One accessory in particular, and that is this right here. Look, we got an MC4 to junction box. I love stuff like this. It has USB-C, USB-A, and then has a 12 volt, probably 5521. You got your mc4 to anderson and what is that xt60 which is cool you got a decent length 55 i'm gonna say this is 55 21 it looks like 55 21 to 55 21 cable i'll confirm that on the screen and then you got some adapters and you got a couple carabiners and then the the thing itself dead ends in mc4 so that's pretty good it's pretty versatile. Why this is so dope is you could take any of your rigid panels or extra panels laying around and immediately make them into a, like a smart USB panel. You could even throw an extension on this and get this kind of connectivity anywhere you want, like in your tent, in, under a porch, under an awning, and have your panel kind of out in the, you know, the elements and all of that jazz, getting the suns. All right, let's take it outside and see if we could get, uh, I want to show you what it looks like kind of set up. And then hopefully the sun cooperates so we can get some sun numbers. So, so as I prepare to kind of deploy it, you can see where this little clamp kind of comes into play. Because as you hold it naturally, the panel kind of V's or upside down V's out. So as I walk, it's kind of like bouncing open and so on and so forth. Which is not a big deal, but you kind of understand why they put this little clamp on here. I must say that I like this form factor for a portable panel because it's taller and narrower. I think that's a good option to have in the marketplace. So you can kind of see here how the dimensions vary. It's a very like narrow panel and it's longer than probably most 100 watt panels. You see that it has some carabiners on the end that correspond with the car ringlet holes or whatever they're called. <laughs> um, I did want to show you something else on the back. Even though it's a four panel panel, it only has three legs, so maybe that's enough. I'm looking at this bend. This bend is interesting in the panel itself. You could kind of see some divots there, and then you could also see a little bit of discoloration on that elbow, which I don't think is too concerning. It's just from it being bent, maybe stretching the material out. So let's go ahead and set it up. But I basically pop it open. It's a little stiff. So maybe you come and grab it here and grab it here and lay it down and you come over to the edge, pull that out and lay it down. Now that's interesting. It doesn't like, it's not playing well <laughs> with the angle. Look at what I end up with here. It kind of has this, and I think it's just because it's stiff, but it's something that you should be mindful of. You're trying to deploy it. It's a little on the stiff side. These are the wire sizes. I would say that's probably about four foot cables. So you get a little bit of a 
separation out of the box, but you're going to need um, some extension cables. Maybe. I don't know. I don't pretend to know what you do. <laughs> so no matter what I try to do, the stiffness of this panel just persists. Watch this. It just buckles back up. <laughs> Which I guess is fine. The angle is the angle. Now, this particular, these particular legs don't have much play in them. I guess you could stretch them out a little bit as you see here. But you, you can see that they're also... They're almost kind of flexing there, so I'm forcing it too much. This is a summer type of situation, so I'm probably going to have to end up laying this flat to get the best coverage. But as I was saying about the legs, you don't have too many angle options here. It just kind of is what it is. Angle it this way or lay it flat. So I was actually talking about the cable length being about four meters, but the cable itself on the panel, it's MC4 cables. So you got about another good four feet here. So you got some pretty good length here. From the panel to there, yes, that's a good look. Now, I'm sure this is just a fluke, but if you look in here, if you can even see it here, my pin is a little bent, so I'm gonna have to get uh, something in there to kind of try and straighten it out because right now the connection is not being made. So let's do that and then not waste this good sun. Man, instead of wasting time trying to fix a cable, I just went and got another cable. This is a different cable. <laughs> and of course it has the Manny Fresh covering. <laughs> which is ETFE. That joke is never going to get old. Sun conditions right now. This has not been out here long, so it's not hot yet. Um, but on this power station, it's showing that it's getting about 30 watts. So we'll keep monitoring. I'll give you guys another two measurements. We'll wait till the sun comes back out. Um, we'll get a reading then. And then we'll also lay it flat and get a reading. I wanted to kind of get this on wax. You can see that it's getting... Uh, okay, interesting. 111 watts, 99 watts, 102 watts. So maybe it's a 120 watt panel. Did I get that wrong? It said 100 watts. And those are the conditions right there. Um, there's still some clouds there, so that's actually looking pretty good. But again, it hasn't been out for a while. I'm going to keep monitoring it and give you guys another reading in a little bit. So this device is, this solar panel is really impressing me here. What's this getting now? I don't know if you can see that. It's saying 72, 84, 90. Look at how the conditions are changing. 110. Let me see if I can get this in here. One. What does that say? 79, 87, 102. Holy moly, this zoom sucks. 116, 119, 124. 125. I'm going to have to try a different power station. This all power is maybe lying to me. Let's get something else prepped here. I got a couple power stations that are full. Such is my life, right? <laughs> full power stations. It just hit me. Grab the OG EcoFlow. It has XT60 on it, just like the all powers. So let's see what that's hitting for. What we got here now? 43, 45, 42. Let's switch it over quickly. This one's probably dead. It's basically been sitting on my back porch. I use it as a super optional device. 27, 22, 31, 34, 37. All right, I see this. The sun is improving. 99, 103. Sun's getting hot. 103. Not improving, but the sun is getting hotter. So it's doing a good 103 right now. Let's look at the cloud situation. Oh yeah, we ain't got no clouds. Okay, cool. Let's let's get the comparison going here. I'm seeing a straight up 100 from the EcoFlow. 100 flat. All right, let's pop it into the all powers. 6, 31, 45, 59, 72, 84, 95, 102, 97, 91, 101, 102. So it's doing the same thing that this one was pretty much getting and the conditions haven't changed the conditions are pretty static as to where the sun is so i'm gonna say this 100 watt panel is producing 102 watts and i have no choice but to believe that when it was given it 119 over here it probably would have gave it 119 over here because the numbers are comparable so it's not like this device is cheating and showing me better numbers than it should panel <laughs> angled like that not even laying flat Let's do it flat. That's pretty high up. It went 79. So the angle's probably better than the flat 80. Still producing good numbers. 
this is a summertime panel i mean a summertime situation so just an update after i did some of the solar testing it looks like this is kind of the heat has helped it to like even out a little bit so when i deployed it back up this is what it looks like so that's pretty cool one thing i forgot to talk about in all my excitement was the device that i was so excited about so this is what it looks like when it is powered in it has a little red light on it and it is giving my power station show sure enough let me turn this over here 60 watts 58 i'm just gonna call that 60. now i have the barrel connector plugged in here and i that one is giving this one nothing but this one appears to be full. So I kind of wanted to see what it would do when I was trying to charge up multiple things, but it's definitely giving out the 60 watts. Definitely. I want to try and figure this out though. But this one is so dead that the barrel connector wouldn't charge it. I think this one is so full that the barrel connector is not giving it anything. Okay, I went and I grabbed the 5521 to eight millimeter adapter because my Jackery is at like about 70%. So I wanna see if I could get some power into old Jack Rizzle through the 5521 cable. Now this one is still getting 60 and I believe this thing is rated at 60. So it doesn't really have capacity, but when I tried it before, it didn't have any power on it. Oh, look at that, Four, 37 watts coming in. So it's still in juice for this one. This one's getting one. So let's unplug that one and then see what this one does. So it looks like it's giving that 37 watts. So it's performing pretty good and it's not negotiating. <laughs> that one's just dying. It's not negotiating how much power to split between them. It just took the 37 watts. Now I'm not gonna test this long enough to figure out what it's gonna absolutely do. I just wanted to make sure that this thing would deliver some power through the 5521 port. I don't necessarily care about the USB-A. Yeah, no, I don't care. Oh, actually, let's see what the 5521 will give this one. Not as This one has 2% of power in it. So it's giving it about 33 watts, which is interesting because I know the USB-C will give it 60. So let's just pop that out and pop the USB-C back in. Yeah, you can see it's going all the way up to 60. So it seems like 5521 is rated for about 40 watts. 60 watt port is giving it 60 watts. All right, let's see how this thing is wired. And I'm not telling you I'm gonna figure that out. You may have to deduce for yourself because I don't fully understand how that works. I understand it a little bit, being honest. So we got 4,400, 44 watts um, coming in. And I'm gonna cover these two. And look at that, power is completely gone. So. Wait, 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 what was it doing? Three, one. <laughs> no, that's not getting a thing, yo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and deduce that this thing is in series. Series means all of them are together. They've been treated as one panel. Let's contradict myself possibly. <laughs> Let's try one. Let's see what one does. One got, it tried to get something. Now, the interesting thing about this device is it was sitting at 45 for a while before it started charging. So maybe I can't even blame it on that. I got to get another device. Freaking EcoFlow. This one's old, though. I don't blame it. All right, so I got Buddy out here giving out 120 watts to this joker over here via two USB-C cables. But you don't care nothing about that. You care about whether or not this panel is still working, right? Plugging it in. Instant. Power up. I'm the first to swing. All right, so let's go back to our is it parallel, is it series test. We're going to throw boom, boom on there. And you can see that that joker died out. I'm going to pull them both off right now. And actually, when I pulled one off, it started to come back a little bit. So I'm going to put one back on, went down to zero. 16, 23, oh no, maybe it's the MPPT, that's just, so it's going to half. So that's interesting. <laughs> so it looks like one of them is knocking out half the power, but two of them knocks out all the power? Let's see if I'm just reacting too quickly to this. Maybe it's gonna take a while for, a second for the MPPT to adjust and give it half again. Cause that could mean that the cells are in some type of parallel. That is weird. I don't understand that. 
let's go far right outside panels and leaving the insides <clears throat> look at that what in the world why would this panel be wired that way <laughs> where the two panels on the inside are connected and then the two panels on the outside are connected let's prove the theory we're gonna go two things to the inside oh actually let's do that two hopping this should be zero if my theory is proper Now that is just weird. Okay, I can't get stuck there. Let's do this last one and see what happens. Two middle joints. I don't know. Jason Noise, you don't have to let me know what this means. <laughs> it's getting half the power output with the joints on here. And then when I go outside, I mean, y'all saw the video. Ain't no need to reiterate. It gets half as well. But when I go two and two, it gets nothing and doth not recover. And you know what's interesting about all this, just to keep it a buck, guys? Put it in full sun. <laughs> just do that. But sometimes people want to know. <laughs>